Um, hi everyone, my name is Brooke, and today I'm going to begin by directing your attention to these two photos of croissants on the board. So now, how many of you, by show of hands, would be interested, would be more interested in trying croissant number one as opposed to croissant number two? Okay, so now that looks like the majority of you. Now, I'm going to direct your attention to this slide where it shows two photos of Milkshake's book. Now, how many of you would be more interested in tasting Milkshake number one as opposed to Milkshake number two? Okay, again, that looks like the majority of you. So, it doesn't really surprise me at all that most of you selected the more out of the ordinary looking foods as the ones that you guys would have rather tasted. Pictured above are two breakfasts, breakfast number one and breakfast number two. Now, breakfast number two is actually what I eat for breakfast every morning, which is much more practical than breakfast number one, which I ate while I was on vacation. Although, without asking you guys, I'm sure I can respond for you that most of you would rather have breakfast number one every day than breakfast number two. But the fact of the matter is that, substance-wise, breakfast number one and breakfast number two are essentially very similar. The only difference really is that breakfast number one has some berries on top. But in the end, it's a banana and some yogurt. Although the only difference between the two breakfasts is that is the way in which breakfast number one is presented to you guys. So now, today we live in a world where we are not only concerned by the substance of the food that we eat, but by the looks of it as well. Worldwide, food presentation is seen as a form of art, and we are indeed living in an age of food. There are over 180 million photos on Instagram with the hashtag food and millions more with other food related hashtags. Now, this far surpasses the use of hashtag life or even hashtag family. Now, to some extent, the photos that people take of their food on social media have become more important than the substance of the food itself. Today, some people order specific foods at restaurants solely for the fact that they will be what they deem to be photogenic. For example, according to the 2017 February issue of Food Technology Magazine published by the Institute, by the Institute of Food Technologists, 68% of adults now produce specialty foods for presentation of the food alone. Chefs and innovators have taken to this recent trend and have begun to pay extra, extra attention to the plating and presentation of their food. In fact, today, certain restaurants specialize solely in presentation of food. Now, for example, here is Dominique Ansel Bakery in Manhattan. People wait in long lines at this bakery just to get this specialty treat known as the cookie shot. Now, although these are seen as innovative, in reality, it's only a cookie shaped into the form of a cup. However, the process of making a cookie into a cup has, in turn, left the cookie extremely dry and hard. But people still continue to wait on long lines and get this cookie shot, and to get this cookie shot, to photograph them and look at them, even though they are not actually very tasty. Now, Barton G is a restaurant in Miami and Los Angeles that is known for the, their elaborate presentation of food. Zaggy explains Barton G's food to be what a circus would be as a restaurant. Um, and while Zaggy has, and while Zaggy has also described Barton G to be more about style than substance, the style of the food is what has put them on the map today. Now. The restaurant Black Tap used to be a simple burger place and bar in Soho until they started making, until they recently started making these new and exciting milkshakes. Now they have lines around the block to get in, which can last up to six hours. And how did all this happen? All because these unique, pretty milkshakes have become one of the most Instagram foods. In reality, though, these milkshakes really are just vanilla ice cream, food coloring, chocolate syrup frosting around the rim with candies, and in reality, they're not really much different than any other ordinary milkshake. It's just how they look. 
So while it has become more common for us to focus on the appearance of the food that we eat, and people are spending money on food just because it looks cool or it looks pretty, even if it doesn't taste good. Over 300,000 Long Islanders are starving. These people would be happy with any food, and certainly not just what we deem to be Instagram-worthy food. Now, hunger on Long Island is an epidemic that many of us are blind to. Hunger hides in the shadows of the affluent suburb that Long Island is stereotyped to be. However, Long Island houses a large population of people who are, indeed, starving. And while you may not personally be affected by hunger, sometimes directly surrounding us, as shown on the map above, um, hold the highest hunger rates on Long Island. And what we are also blind to is the fact that your own neighbor could possibly be starving. According to a study done by the Long Island Community Foundation, about 20% of the starving people on Long Island are homeowners, meaning that quite literally, someone that lives next door to you could be starving and you might not know about it. While hunger on Long Island has increased by 37% since 2006, our interest in the presentation of our food has also by two has increased from 2006 by 100%. Often people are focused more about how a picture of their meal is going to turn out or how many likes a picture of their meal on social media will get, rather than thinking about the fact that people in our own community are actually starving. Now, whether this talk today has made you think more about, has made you question the obsessions that we hold with food today, or with the looks of our food, or has made you more conscious of the silent starving here on Long Island, it's a positive thing. Because each and every one of you can make a difference and help the hungry. So now, you guys may have guessed that I do love food. Trying new foods has become one of my favorite activities. I love finding new restaurants, especially ones that specialize in the appearance of food. I love taking pictures of my food. I love trying to make my own art out of food. I believe no one needs to feel bad about their foodie interests in this room. No one needs to abandon them. Your foodie interests can be utilized in ways, in an amazing way to help people out. For example, a year ago, after learning about the hunger epidemic on Long Island, I reflected on my own behavior. I thought about all the food that I have taken pictures of, all the food that I've tried after seeing on social media, all the food that I've gotten solely for the appearance of it that didn't actually taste that good. And at first, I felt bad about it. But, in, at first, but however, instead of feeling bad, I decided to share my love of food with people who otherwise wouldn't have been able to experience it. I started cooking, I started baking desserts and food for the Mary Brennan Inn in Hempstead. And when I bake for the inn, though, my food that I make might not look like the food that we see on Instagram. I try my hardest to make the food look presentable and focus on the appearance of it for the people in the end as well. Now, making food for local shelters or soup kitchens is something that you can all do. Taste the, take the love that you have for food and you can use that love to do something amazing. You can share that love with people who otherwise would not, who otherwise would not have the same access to food. Or if you aren't much of a chef, contribute to can drives and help put food in our local pantries. So now, if you're someone like me who enjoys watching Master Chefs on TV, reads food magazines, stalks Instagram food accounts, and takes pictures of aesthetically pleasing foods, don't just stop doing it. Just put everything into perspective. You can take these interests and with them, feed your community. Channel your inner food artist and make food for your local soup kitchen. Share your love of food. Share your love of food with people who otherwise would, couldn't be able to experience it. Although today food is sometimes seen as a form of art, it is a necessity and a resource that should, that should be respected and not wasted. Thank you.